So in this video, we're going to be covering the TBS Crossfire on the X9 Lite, the D8 protocol, the D16 protocol, and slightly the R9M protocol as well, and how everything has been working so far. Now let's start with the D8. Now the D8 protocol is what you're gonna find that are basically pre-installed in your toothpicks that come with the Crazy B board and everything of that nature. And this is why it's kind of a, a big issue for a lot of people. But what I can tell you is it'll eventually be sorted out. I'm pretty sure of this. And even if not, you can do what I'm currently doing right now, which is using a multi-protocol module. Now this one is really great. I know it's a little extra feature for some might not like that. But what's really cool is you can bind your FlySky, FRSky, Spectrum, uh, the toys. You can do a lot with this. So this is either way a must-have um, if you have a lot of toys or some FlySky stuff. So it's it's a really great module, this one is. And you're going to be like, oh, no, but I'm not going to get that much range. Actually, with these, you're not go flying pretty far because the only thing that's going to be mostly running D8 are these little tiny micros that you will not go further than 150 meters away. And this has plenty of power for even... even even better than the internal receiver at times. This is what I've noticed. Now, so for D8, the current solution is one of these, but then you get a lot of extra benefits. So let's put this to the side. Now, I highly recommend this one because I have been using it nonstop, and this is my main driver now. Now, for D16, I have an XM Plus radio in this iFlight toothpick, which I burnt the motor and I replaced, and I wanted to fly again, and I was just testing it today, or actually yesterday. And um, it's running an XM Plus radio that has not been updated. With the nightly build that I made a tutorial of a couple days ago, it works just fine with the internal receiver. So you're not gonna need that multi-protocol module, but you can also use that multi-protocol module, which is something really nice to have. So if we go here, this is actually bound on the Access STD16 right here. And it's, uh, it's been working great. I don't know what the hell this reg ID is here, but anyways, we'll, we'll just ignore that. But here we have the Access D16, and it's binding the normal XM Plus radios on the internal receiver just fine with no issues so far, which is a great addition. So that out of the way. So now we cover D8 and D16. Now let's also cover the... TBS Crossfire. So I've been working on it since the morning to actually confirm that the TBS Crossfire does work and the telemetry and even the Lua scripts. And it, in the beginning it didn't, but it didn't for a couple reasons. For some reason the Matek F722 just would not allow it to connect. So what I did instead, I made the TBS Crossfire output SBUS because you can do that. So I made this output SBUS and I plugged it into my drone mesh VUSB and I saw that it was actually working and everything is running the crossfire with the telemetry and everything. So I saw the telemetry working, but the RC signal was just not working for some reason. So I just decided to get a really old hack RC all in one flight controller and just plug in the TBS crossfire, the original protocol. We're not running 3PM, we're not running SBUS, we're not running Spectrum with this because you can't choose that. I'm running crossfire, full fledged crossfire and with no modifications. It actually works. I can confirm it works, at least on the nightly build that I did the tutorial on. It works great. Telemetry is working. No issues. So far, it's been great. Obviously, I haven't done any long range testing, but it is working. So it's working really great. However, what happens when you run the crossfire, you do tend to soak up that battery. So make sure you get some really good 18650 batteries. So for the TBS crossfire, any full fledged size module, what I've done here, as you can tell, this is my mod right now. It looks pretty clean, doesn't it? So let's pop this open and see what the hell I did. What I did was, is I took the cover that it comes with and I also purchased one of those x Lite adapters. Now, the x Lite adapters will not fit in there because of the way that the sides are portraying here. So I just used a bit of hot glue. I hot glued it on the default just cover for the back here. And I made a little tiny square hole, or like just a square gap here, to just bring the wires through. And I just put hot glue all over here just to keep holding them into place. And then whenever I want to use the, for example, crossfire, which I really rarely ever use, but I just do this for you guys, is I, I would just go ahead and plug this in. So if you do ever get these type of connectors, most of the wires will be going to the right side. And then I just go ahead and plug it in. Just boom. Oop. Yeah, this is good. As you can tell, that was what the cutout I made. And we still have a lot of room. Nothing is being squished here. And just bring in any module now, any full-fledged module. And voila, you have yourself a nice looking setup here. 
Now, the next thing down the line is the charging, the charging board that you have to basically hack or mod that we did earlier. Now, what I've, I find it to be very useful um, and what you can, it does have a buzzer on board. So when it's done charging, it'll just do a continuous buzz telling you to please unplug me. And I have no problem with that. Now, many people said, well, the QX7 comes like that. Well, actually the first versions didn't come with any way to charge it. And I have the first gen QX7 and QX7S and there was never any charging interface. Now to confirm if these, this pro version is the Hall Effect or not, I can't confirm that yet. So I need to get some normal ones first and the, you know, the normal gimbals that come for the X9 before I can confirm any of that because it's very difficult to figure it out actually. And I, to be honest, I don't want to ruin it just yet uh, unless I get another gimbal and I could take it apart. But right now this is my main driver. I am not touching anything else but this currently. It just feels so nice in the hand. So I'm also working on a couple mods. So with this little hack mod, whatever you want to call it, it works just fine. And these are really cheap. So they're okay quality. They're not the best quality, these little adapters for the X-Lite. I'll have them linked down below. You can go ahead and check them out. What have I tested and I could confirm working? I could confirm D16 is working. I confirmed D8 is working with a multi-protocol module and there is no weird issues or anything that comes along while I'm, I'm usually flying this. And uh, what I can also confirm is that TBS Crossfire does work. And I still cannot confirm the R9M Lite, neither the R9 because I haven't tested those, but this is a part one. Uh, the charging board is working. It's charging to 8.1 volts, I think, but I need to double check it. Uh, last time I charged it was 8.1 8 volts, but that'll also be updated in a later video. And I'm also working on a mod for Thingiverse where you could either 3D print or cut out of carbon fiber. Uh, I've put two standoffs in the nose here, as you can see that. And right now I'm designing a little carbon fiber piece that'll just, you know, come up like this. And I have these little tripod mount thingies that I'm just going to set up right here, which I could just spin and it'll hold into place. And this way I can just uh, have a sick setup just like this. And, um, yeah, this is going to be all around pretty awesome, especially for places that I've never been. And I'm not going to do some very tight flying where this will do the job just fine. This is the Toby Rich. It's really cool. Diversity, inbuilt battery, so I don't have to bring another battery. SD card. I could charge it via USB. And, uh, well, you need the connector. And I could even connect the docking. And rapid fire runs perfect. There is no desyncing issues, which I have confirmed. And that's why I like this, uh, this setup. This is like the ultimate setup for myself. I'm just currently building the ultimate micro toothpick setup for myself right now because the five inch quads are just becoming way harder to fly lately. So overall, what do I think of this? I don't know why I like it. Maybe because I'm just modding it nonstop. Or maybe because it has so many accessories and I'm gonna see a lot of things or maybe because it's cheap or the way it feels, you know, you get full fledged gimbals, small size, proper radio, open TX, you know, you can never have the full package, you know, that, you know, the D8 thing I think will get solved eventually. Even if it doesn't get solved, this solves it just fine. Plus, if you're going to have, you know, fly sky toys, whatever, this is also very useful to you. So this is a, just a complete package and spectrum, whatever. So for anyone wanting to buy the transmitter, whether the light or the pro version, um, I totally would recommend you do it. But obviously, if you wanted to be a little bit nicer, then you have to put that little effort to get the charging board uh, to get one of these modules but at the end of the day these things will last you forever so that's what's really cool and um it just it, it you'll build a connection with it because I, I just i'm slowly building connection with it that's why i'm taking the time to go design some sort of a a tripod mount where i can set up a green because top sky is just not really cutting it for um much more aggressive flying or somewhere uh you know much more reliable flying it's really good to do just like a quick around you kind of thing but i think the 2.4 gigahertz is really screwing up with the receiver inside i don't know if the receiver is shielded so i do get a lot of breakup when i enter the other room um so that's why i want something uh, a little bit beefier like this guy on them and also i got these carbon fibers these actually were sent to me by banggood thank you banggood uh they're really nice i don't know if they're gonna make it not slip but it does add a little nice texture, a little nice feel, even though you can't really see it. But maybe on the white version, it'll look really nice. But to be honest, I think this blue version looks better than the white version. Um, I don't know why. Uh, it's it's plasticky, but it feels really nice. I can't explain it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would agree with me who's actually touched one and used one. And look at this. It just it fits so nicely. Everything's in reach. 
I just really like it. And I think um, I haven't opened it. Oh, I did open it actually. Did I open it? Yeah, I did open it. Um, there might be a way where we can possibly add more switches, but I'm going to keep that for a later day. And um, yeah, you could probably replace this one with another switch if you wanted to here. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a link to everything down below. Go ahead and check those out. Those greatly support the channel. Allow me to feed my kids and allow the channel to keep going. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully it was useful to someone. I'll have a link to everything from the uh, flashing, how to flash the nightly build on this to installing the USB charger board. So I'll have the links to those down below so you can check them out if you missed those. And well, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.